So here's the A to Z NFT launch framework that you need to follow to successfully launch your NFT project in 2024. If this is the first time we meet, I'm Leon Aboud and I help the world's largest brands launch and scale in Web3. And in today's video, you're going to be learning the exact framework that we've used on some of the world's largest brands that have launched in the space. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the secret sauce. There is no extra hidden information behind the paywall that you need to pay to access. This is the framework and what other agencies would charge tens of thousands of dollars for is right here for free for you to grab. So trust me when I say that if you follow the information that is going to be written right here for you and if you watch this and take every single nuts and bolts that I'm going to be giving you and build that into the ship that is your NFT project, you should be succeeding. And the reason I do this for free is very simple. I believe that the best way to shape the future of an industry is by empowering the builders that actually end up building the products and services that will make up that industry. And that is how I plan on making my impact in Web3, by empowering you, the watcher, into building better products and services in more ethical and effective ways that I intend on making my impact. So today I'm going to be showing you the three launch phases that constitute an A to Z launch framework. And I want you to think about it that way. You wanna think that launching an NFT project, you need to activate certain touch points with your target consumers. The very first time someone sees your product is not going to be the first time that someone makes a decision to buy. People in Web3 need to see experience here and interact with your product a handful of times before they really have the commitment of taking action, whether that's joining your Discord, submitting their whitelist, and finally the day of the mint actually approving a transaction to buy from your project. And for you to push someone from someone who is not aware about your project to someone who is a raving fan, who not only is gonna buy your product, but talk about your product to their friends, you have to follow a three step framework. And very simply said, I want you to think of this framework as the whisper, tease, and shout framework. And at every stage of the process, phase one, whisper, phase two, tease, phase three, shout, we're going to be activating different touch points. We're going to be communicating different things. In the first stage, making someone that is not aware about our product, picking their curiosity. In phase two, we're gonna take that curiosity and turn it into a desire. And in phase three, we're gonna convert that desire into an actual purchase. And that's what every three stage serves for. And I'm going to be showing you every stage, what are the different marketing activities that you should be prioritizing to successfully launch this. And one example I'm going to be taking uh, throughout this video is actually from one of the projects that we've helped on their go-to market strategy for called Persona Journey. I'm proud of my clients and these guys have been doing an absolutely fantastic job at launching their project. They currently are in that phase two where they are converting that awareness into interest. They're doing incredible. So I, I proudly show one of the case studies and it's one thing showing you case studies from the outside and actually showing you case studies from projects that I am actively involved in. So throughout, this video, I'm going to be referencing some points about how Persona did it and how you can replicate that framework as well. Sounds good? Phase one of launching an NFT project is the whisper phase. And whisper typically lasts anywhere between six to 54 weeks. We've seen projects do it in six weeks and all the way up to over a year doing it. And you'll understand why as I explain. But there are three main activities that you wanna be partaking during phase one, which is the whisper phase. And these are brand teasers, tier C collaborations, and the founder funnel. So here's what I mean by phase one whisper phase. This is where people have never heard of your product ever. It's the first time they hear about you. So your goal is to make the very first impression properly. You wanna make a good first impression. That's when you meet someone and you give a very strong handshake and the words that come out of your mouth are ones that will stick with the person you meet. That's exactly the objective of phase one. I want you to think of phase one as the phase of a new store opening in a mall. In the beginning, when the store doesn't just open its door and it's full of customers, no. During the construction phase, the store 
ends up wrapping the outside of the store with coming soon, your city's hottest new retail shopping experience. And then you have beautiful trailers that kind of sell the dream. That's a little bit what phase one you should do, which is why I have right here brand teasers. At this stage, you should not be talking about utility. You should not be talking about the team. You should not be talking about what is your prospect going to get? What is the transformation that they're going through? What are the emotional benefits of your brand? Right here, you're not talking about anything. Instead, what you're doing is you are going to be pleasing people's imagination and their desire for a story using brand teasers and brand trailers. If you are to look, for example, at Persona, their very first tweet, which was made in July 18, 2023, is just a logo with a nice animation that says, a world is forming, the journey begins. And you can see if you scroll up, you're gonna see what that means. Oh, very, very, very teaser based, very trailer, not a lot of big information. Now your question might be, okay, how did Persona launch a trailer and how did they get a couple hundred thousand impressions and thousands of interactions per post? And this takes us to the second point, which is tier C collaborations. So if you don't know, in the Web3 space, there is this concept called collab managers. And you wanna think of these people as salesmen. These are salesmen that are gonna go sell your product to other communities. And the way they do this is very simple. Collab managers typically have a very rich network of communities and these communities what they want is very simple they want early access to some of the hottest projects that are going to be launching and needless to explain sometimes having early access to a hot project ends up resulting in thousands of dollars in revenue and profit for the individuals and the people part of the community so people are willing to interact with early projects if they see the potential and these collab managers one very simple responsibility which is to sell your project to the right communities. And tier C collabs, the reason there is C is because there's three tiers of collabs that you can have of projects that exist. Tier A, tier B, tier C. Tier A being the top of the top, the cream of the crop, uh, blue chip projects, the Abe Dows, the Azukis, the, the, the top alpha groups. Tier B being good projects, active communities, but a little bit more accessible. And tier C being kind of the majority of all alpha groups that exist and all com NFT communities, they fall under tier C collaborations. And although these are lower quality, what they do end up bringing is activity. They do end up bringing attention and they do end up bringing awareness to your project. And that's where if there's one position outside of the founder position that is crucial and critical for the success of the project, it is that of a collab manager. A collab manager can cost anywhere between $300 to $600 per week and you'll need them for pretty much the majority of the launch of your NFT project. So that's why it's important for you to pick someone that is good. And I do not recommend you to do it yourself because what you're tapping in is the network of these people. And you building your own network is going to be incredibly time consuming and detrimental for all the other initiatives of the project because it is a full-time thing building your network and doing it just for one launch of a project doesn't make sense. So this brings us in the last activity that you're going to be doing during the launch of phase one, which is the whisper phase, which is the founder funnel. Now here's something very important that you need to know as you are launching your project. The brand account, this chunk, the brand teasers and the collabs are initiatives that you are doing on the brand account. One unfortunate reality is that the brand account does not grow by itself. It is incredibly hard to produce content that spreads organically via the brand account. People do not like to interact with brands. They like interacting with people. And the way you do this is through the founder funnel. The founder funnel, I've made an entire video about it, but it's pretty much engaging in activities that are going to create awareness into the founder account and then funneling that attention into the actual project. Because in Web3, ladies and gentlemen, attention is gold. It is the most valuable currency that you can control. And the way you generate attention is by either engaging in activities that generate awareness or paying. Paying your way in is not a path that I recommend unless you have hundreds of thousands of budgets that you're willing to burn through. So for most of us going the organic route by engaging in activities that generate awareness is the way to go. So the question is, what are those activities in the context of the founder funnel? That's where we talk about engaging on social media, creating a list of the top 250 accounts in Web3 that you resonate with and also have a large following and being part of the conversation, engaging in the comments. Number two, creating actual content that is valuable 
to your target audience, to your target demographic? What do the people who are interested in your product, what are some other adjacent interests that they are also into? If you're building an anime project, People must be interested in art, they must be interested in storytelling, they're interested in lore, maybe entrepreneurship. How do you create content that they actually find interesting that will get you awareness? Number three, you can actually do Twitter spaces. Twitter spaces is an incredible way to start garnering attention and awareness into your brand and building a loyal following around your persona as a project founder. So the big three for the founder funnel are replying, engaging, number two, Quality content, number three, Twitter spaces. These are the three ways you start funneling attention into the brand. In the context of Persona, the founder of the project is Spike, and you can see just scrolling through his Twitter, the type of content, the type of engagement is a lot more uh, mass market, if you will. And the way the funnel works is, is very simple. Where at the top, you have the founder account, and then you're gonna convert that attention into the project account using your pinned tweet, so pinned, tweet. You are also going to be doing occasional uh, retweets of the project through your personal account. You are also going to be creating content about your project. One content example I can think about is here are five things I learned building my NFT project or my top three mistakes building my NFT project. So it's about documenting your journey and by making your project part of conversation and not conversation is how you actually get to produce quality content that people actually enjoy and they can start following you through the process. That's exactly how I've been doing uh, marketing, guys. If you are to look at all my social medias, whether it's on YouTube, on Twitter, I'm Leon, I am the founder, and I often talk about my brand, Unfungible, in contexts that are relevant and educational for you. And I make it clear that if you are a top brand looking to scale in this space to get in touch with us, it's a very clear messaging. And that's exactly what you wanna reverse engineer when you are doing the launch, your brand being unfungible, it's your NFT project. So that is phase one, ladies and gentlemen, the longest phase of the launch of the NFT project, six to 54 weeks. Now, what happens when we are ready to move from phase one to phase two? And that is where we have phase number two, which is the tease phase. So during this stage of phase one, a lot of people in Web3 might have seen our brand for the very first time. Most will not have followed. They're hearing about us for the very first time. And that's the goal. That is the goal. Here you have Web3, hear about us for the first time. Once that is accomplished, that is where we move into phase two, which is the tease phase. And at this stage, this is where you actually wanna start communicating certain things that is going to pique the interest of people. Phase one was curiosity, phase two is interest. And the way we do this is the following. So when in phase one we were doing brand teasers, in phase two we're actually gonna start talking a little bit more about our product. So product announcements. Why is it that people need to pay attention to us? And what type of product target consumer is this actually for? So that's where people are going to know, are you a Web3 game? Are you an anime? Are you perhaps an IP play? Where do you fit in the different categories of Web3? And that's what you wanna start doing about the product announcements. You're gonna start shedding a bit more light about your actual product and why is it that people need to be paying attention to you. Now, as we continue with the collaborations, we're going to move on to tier B collabs. During phase one, we should have garnered enough social proof attention to be able to start unlocking tier B collaborations. So there's a little bit higher up in quality of collaboration that we can now tap into thanks to the found social proof that we were able to gain from phase one. And that is why, why going back, phase one is the longest phase because it takes the longest time to gain the social proof and the attention. So tier B collaborations, we keep doing the collaboration, this time we up the quality that we are going to be going after. Number three, tier B ambassadors. What are tier B ambassadors? Tier B ambassadors are quality content creators that are going to create organic content about your product. And the goal with the ambassadors is to further push conversation about your project in Web3 conversation. If you are to scroll up as you go through the Persona account, you're gonna see at different stages, they announced ambassadors into their ecosystem, whether it was Mani, whether it was NFT Boy, they started onboarding different ambassadors to help push the narrative of the project even further. And the reason we have tier B ambassadors at this stage and not here is for a very simple reason, which is economics. Quality ambassadors want to work with quality brands. Most ambassadors will not want to work with a brand that has 100 Twitter followers. You need a couple thousand, if not tens of thousands, 
for you to be able to get a good deal with that ambassador. That's why in phase two, it starts making a lot more sense economically to onboard ambassadors that are going to give you more competitive rates because if you want to sell someone on talking about a project that has 100 followers, th this is what they typically do. <laughs> I've seen <laughs> hundreds of times. They're just going to throw a, a high bald number, $2,000 for one tweet. It's like, bro, you have 7,000 followers. You're charging me $2,000. Yes, I'm charging you $2,000. And the moment they anchor you to that price, you're done. Because you cannot come back in two months and be like, hey, by the way, want to try again. You can't do that. So you hold off on the ambassadors until phase two, where you start rolling out tier B collaborations. B, B is typically creators that are between 5K to 15K. That is the range, again, dependent on your niche, depending on the actual creator, but general rule of thumb and the rates, they vary anywhere from $200 per tweet all the way to $1,000. What you wanna to try to do with ambassadors is to lock in long-term partnerships and what they really like is when you offer them a recurring revenue. So, hey man, I'll pay you $3,000 per month. It's five tweets per month, one thread, three retweets, and perhaps one space weekly. So when you bundle that in a monthly recurring revenue, creators like that. They don't like one-off activations. They like to feel like they actually work with brands. So that is one hack that is going to help you get better return on investment. Next, we start introducing weekly spaces. At this stage, we are starting to get, our account is starting to get more impressions, more eyeballs. And one thing we're gonna start doing with that, that eyeballs is we wanna start converting these eyes into interests. And the way you do this is by exposing people to your brand. The average consumer needs three to six hours of exposure to a brand before they can commit to buy from them. So the way you do this in Web3, Twitter spaces. That's where you put the founder up on stage you have them sell the brand, sell the vision, sell the story, sell their ability to execute on that story that you're selling. And you wanna communicate all of those things because people in Web3 invest in builders. They don't invest in ideas, they invest in builders. How do you highlight your capacity to build? It is via creating a weekly space show for the actual brand. Number five. We're gonna continue doing the founder funnel, replying, creating content, and hopping on other people's Twitter spaces. And finally, number six, we're gonna start doing a Discord soft launch. By soft launch, you don't wanna do a grand opening. Instead, what you wanna do is you wanna sprinkle invites into your Discord. Keep it exclusive, keep it healthy. You wanna bring people in, maintain a certain level of engagement, and then open it up for a little bit more people. Because the last thing, the killer of an NFT project is opening your Discord too quickly, it floods with people, and then activity dies the next day. That is a killer of a Web3 brand. So you open your Discord, bring it in, you incentivize the people that were early for you, you're more generous with the whitelist allocations, and you grow from there. The way Persona did it was they had a GIF that was very branded to their style, and in the GIF there was a, a riddle that they had to solve to access the Discord, and that's how they were able to get 100 people in right away. Phase two lasts anywhere between three to 12 weeks. So here we said six to 54, right here we have three to 12 weeks. So you see how at this stage, we're starting to accelerate the pace of the project. This is where all of a sudden spending starts to increase with the ambassadors. At this stage, you should have started to find your brand narrative, and you should be doubling down on that. So your brand voice, your unique selling proposition, you should have found that and you should be doubling on it. That's why phase one is here. It's like the experimental, it's the sandbox. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, we got phase three, which is the final phase of the marketing, the critical stage of phase three that I'm going to be showing you right now. Phase three, and this is shout. This stage typically lasts anywhere between one to four weeks. And these are the initiatives that we're going to be having during phase three. So are you ready for this? Phase number three, the shout. This is where we're going to be converting all the attention we got from here into the last stage of the project, the last couple of weeks, the most critical weeks of the launch of your project. We have six initiatives that are going to be happening. And that's where you're gonna have maximum gas on the pedal with the founder funnel on steroids. Everything you were doing with the founder funnel during phase two, you're gonna be doing it 
10 times more during the last stage. If you were hopping on one Twitter space daily, you're gonna do five daily. If you were tweeting once a day, you're gonna start tweeting 10 times a day. If you were replying 100 times a day, you're gonna start doing 500 times per day. You wanna to try to get as much attention as possible during that one phase because you wanna remind people that you exist. A lot of the people that saw you during phase one and phase two, you wanna remind them that you exist and you wanna tell them that you are near the finish line and that they don't wanna be missing out anytime soon. Number two, brand partnership announcements. This is a critical one that you need to have in place. By this stage, people are curious, they're interested. But how do you get someone who's interested? How do you push them over the edge to actually buy your product? And this is by building brand association. This is where you come out with announcements saying that we are officially partnered with Binance. We are incubated by X, Y, and Z company. That is where you wanna create social proof into your project. And if you don't have it, create it. Start highlighting the small wins that you've had. We've just partnered with Doodles now. We've just got Aplist for our collaboration. We just did this, we just like take the things that might look minor for you and scale them up. Use name drop. Say that if you were able to land the founder of, of D Gods on an AMA, celebrate it. With this, you need to build credibility to your brand. And the way you do it is through association. So association come with brand partnership announcements. Number three, we got tier A collaborations. The top of the top, the cream of the crop, we're giving our final whitelist to tier A collabs. At the same time, we have rolled out tier A ambassadors. These are more expensive but they are, you are working with them for like the last month. We need the top talking about us. And here's what I'll tell you about this one. If you've done a good enough job during the previous two phases, what should be happening at this stage is you just need to work with one or two tier A ambassadors to create a trickle effect in the marketplace of other content creators to start talking about your brand. Content creators make a living talking about brands. So if you do get enough job at branding yourself, selling yourself, the founder funnel, everything we spoke about, at this stage, you should start becoming organically part of Web3 conversation. You don't need to force your way in, you just become conversation. So one or two ambassadors on board should help trigger that process. It's like the spark that is gonna put the whole building on fire. That's where it happens. Number five. Daily Twitter space shows. Again, the same reasoning as during phase two. Now we're doing it on steroids. Every single day we're going to be organizing a Twitter space show. And here's a small tip for you. There's three main time zones that make up the target audience in Web3. So US, Canada, we have Europe, and then we have Asia. And the time zones that work for the US, so peak hours of US are not peak hours in Asia. So what you're gonna start to do, what you're gonna wanna do during the Twitter space shows is organize a daily show but every day is at a different time with a two hour interval. So two hour different. Let's say the first day you do a 10 a.m. Eastern space show. Next day you wanna do 12 p.m., then 2 p.m., then 4 p.m., then 6 p.m. That way you get to hit every time zone and every buyer. And finally, that's where you open your Discord grand opening. That's where you have, you open it for everyone and you wanna create maximum social proof. You want as many people to come in and you want as many people paying attention to your brand. And that is the Discord grand opening. And one to four weeks, ladies and gentlemen, this is the final push. Only enter phase three when you are entirely confident and entirely ready. Because once you enter phase three, there's no going back. Once you announce mint day and mint price, which happens in that phase, there's no going back. You cannot change that, you cannot revert that, and you cannot reduce the price. Never reduce. The best way to communicate uncertainty is by changing your mint price or mint supply ahead of the mint. Never. The cardinal sin of Web3 brands is changing that. So enter phase three at your own risk because there, once you are in, there's no stepping back. So this, ladies and gentlemen, are the three stages, the three phases of launching an NFT project. Phase one, whisper, six to four, four, Six to 54 <laughs> weeks. Phase two, we got tease three to 12 weeks. And then finally, we got phase three, the shot, the point of no turning back. Launch your project using this framework. Be patient, work on your product, work on your craft, work on the founder funnel, and you should be succeeding. My name is Leon Aboud, and it was an absolute pleasure sharing this information with you today, and I cannot wait to see you on the very next video. Cheers.